Born in Dobsonville, Soweto, she splashed into the musical scene at the tender age of 19, burning the airwaves and sending people across the world grooving to an intoxicating powerhouse voice and melodic sounds, such as Thank You, Mr. DJ, I'm Burning Up, Motherland, and the infectious Umkomboti, which is still an anthem around Africa. She's also a pioneer as the first black kid to appear on a talent show, The Sugar Shack. Today, she's a mother of four boys, a businesswoman, a goodwill ambassador, a part-time lecturer, and still the princess of Africa. Yvonne Shaka Shaka, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, let's take it back. And I'm talking about way back home. Where does this name Shaka Shaka hail from? <laughs> well, Chaka Chaka is my, it was my nickname at school because I used to be an athlete at school. Right. I used, I used to really love sprinting. So um, some of my friends, you know, would just say to me, you're full of Chaka Chaka, you know, my real right. surname is Chaka. Machaka. So Machaka, yeah. So they took much um, Chaka Chaka from Machaka. Oh, great. And I know that uh, your father obviously died when you were 11 years old. He was obviously an outstanding woman, raised you and your sisters on a 40 rand a month salary as a domestic worker. And this was in apartheid South Africa. How was life at that time for you? Well, life was not very easy during those times because, you know, I can imagine uh, being born during apartheid with your parents um, earning such little money. My father right. died when I was 11 years old, and my mother was actually not even allowed to have a house. OK. I hear there's a dog in the background. I'm sure he wants to take part in our interview. <laughs> yes, sir. Thomas. Right. OK. Oh, he listens. <laughs> Okay, so you were saying you're, and then she raised you by herself, obviously, at that time. Yeah, well, it, it, things were not very easy, you know. It was quite terrible, and um, it was it was just sad that you know uh, people could earn forty rents, which is what equivalent of what ten five dollars. Okay. Know? And now I know from an African upbringing. Music was not something glamorous for girls to do, at least from our parents back in the day. They wouldn't really encourage you to go into music because it was considered, oh, you're a woman of loose morals, you're going to be playing in beer halls full of drunken men and all that. How did you do that at 19? Well, it was not very easy to convince my mother, you know, to be a musician because I'd just finished my high school right. and I was due to go to university to study law. So she, she, she obviously agreed that you should go ahead and, uh, you know. No, she actually never did. She didn't because um, she didn't want me to do this. So I did all the recording, everything, taking pictures, you know, photo shoot for, for a cover and everything without her knowledge. Right. Now, the feedback only came when I had to sign a contract, because during those times, you had to be 21 in South Africa to be able to sign a contract. Right. And when she found out that I've been sneaking out from home, not going to, to, to find a university, not going to find a loan to go to university, and I've been doing all this recording, she was quite upset. But, you know, I convinced her that, you know what, sign this contract, I will... I will sing, and I'll still go to university and get a degree or a diploma, you know? You are now Dr. Shaka Shaka. I know the University of KwaZulu-Natal bestowed you a doctorate in music. And yes. uh, you just told me that you've had uh, your 22nd album. You're still yeah. working. Tell us about this. Well, you know, I was quite um, humbled by the University of uh, Guazulu Natal when they honored me with an, when they gave me this honorary degree. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, it, it means, you know, people appreciate what you do, they appreciate you. And for me, it keeps me wanting to do more, you know. Right. And uh, I've just finished recording, well, I've just released my 22nd album called Amazing Man. Right. It's a dedication to all our African leaders, but. Um, it's a dedication to Nelson Mandela and other African Great. leaders. Okay. Yeah. So when are people going to be able to hear this album? Is it out? Is it launched, released somewhere? Well, the CD has been launched in South Africa. 
In fact, I was in Washington at the AIDS conference in, in, in July last year. We launched it there as well. Mm -hmm. And it is on my website as well. All the music is on the website and people can get it on www.princessofafrica.coza. Okay. So the music is there. It is in the shops already. And um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be performing in two days' time and I'm performing that. I performed last Sunday. There was a big conference for UNICEF right. where I performed the song. And um, yeah, I, I think it's a great song. Now, let's talk about the Queen of African Song, obviously the late Miriam Makeba. You are the princess yes. of Africa. Uh, she paved the way for many, uh, I think, men and women, musicians, to actually enter the international music scene and to also, you know, uh, send a message to the world about what was going on in South Africa. And it was sad that we lost her doing what she loved, obviously, and singing one of her greatest uh, renditions, which was Pata Pata. And uh, how did that resonate with you as a fellow South African musician who's female? You know, I think one good thing about um, all our great musicians like Dorothy Masuka, Miriam Makeba, and all those people, mm -hmm. they paved the way for us. You know, there's a song that's called Legends of Africa from one of my albums, Power mm -hmm. of Africa. It's about all these le legends, you know, particularly people like Miriam Makeba, who, you know, their music kept us going, you know, sure. when, when things were dark, when things were not good. They sang, they told the world about the atrocities that were happening in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, how best to, to disseminate this information, obviously by song. So people like Miriam, Dorothy, Dolly Ratebe, they opened their roads for us and they did it for very little. During those times, there were no halls for them. There were no uh, uh, places for them to perform. They used to perform in small venues. And when the police came, they would hide in the kitchen and be like maids and things like that. So that's just an interesting story. But you know, those are, are, are our heroes, you know, right. some of them living. And for me, Miriam's voice would always be alive. Right. Now you, are uh, now a good world ambassador. And of course, that's one of the jobs that have been keeping you busy and also in the limelight besides your music. What exactly are you doing in that role? Well, as a UNICEF and Roll Back Malaria, Goodwill Ambassador, you know, uh, for malaria, I've just been traveling all over the world, you know, um, right. being this advocate because we know that every 60 seconds a child dies from malaria. And this is something that is curable and preventable. And you cannot imagine that, you know, in, in this day and age, children, pregnant women should still be dying from this. Right. So that's why I really applaud the Global Fund, you know, because the Global Fund will give money to countries for AIDS, TB and malaria. And those are the diseases that kill our people in the sub-Saharan Africa. Right. So obviously you keep doing your job and um, traveling a lot in this capacity. Oh, well, yeah, you know, um, I'll be going to Japan um, on the 22nd for TCAT. It's a big uh, conference in Japan where all the world, world leaders will be there mm -hmm. and they'll be talking about different things. And I have been invited to go there. So for me, it's just been an eye opener, you know, and I've learned a lot as well. But I always think it's important that our leaders in Africa also invest in their people, you know. It's very good to get money from donors, but I think, you know, a bank would not give you money if you do not have your own collateral. So it's important that our leaders invest in their people so that when the money from, 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 from donors come, it's a cherry on top. Right. Okay, now we're talking of South Africa. It's almost... Uh three black presidents later, and almost two decades <laughs> after apartheid. How are things, how have things changed? You come from Dobson, Soweto, and obviously back in apartheid South Africa, this was a dark place, shacks and no lights, no running water, bad roads. How have things changed? According to well, you? I must say that, you know, Soweto is not what people think it is. Soweto is actually a beautiful place, you know. Right. There's 
houses, you know, there's electricity, roads are being tarred. And I must say that our government have actually done a lot as well, you know, for rural areas. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, urban areas like Soweto, like uh, Mamilodi, except Alexander, you know, those, those places have always been like small towns, you know. Right. So growing up in Soweto, the only thing that was really not good was that I was actually forced to live in a township when white people were living in these... Um, uh, beautiful areas, you know, in suburbs and things like that. Right. But I'm very, very happy to say, you know, after it's 20 years now, I'm proud to be a South African. I'm proud to call South Africa home <clears throat> and actually thank those people who fought for me to give me back my dignity because I live wherever I want today. And lots of people have got roofs over their heads, they've got electricity, they've got tarred roads, you know, sanitation and all those things, they are there. Problems are there, bottlenecks are there, challenges are still there, you know, with service deliveries. But I must say that our government is really, really trying. And, you know, things like the influx control is not there anymore. People are at liberty to go and work and live wherever they want. So I think really, right. that for me, wants to say I would vote for a black government any time because, you know, yeah. black people so, are, are, are more in my country. And, and, and you know, if we were given... The, the, the same opportunities, we would not be talking what we're talking about today. Yeah, now South Africa has obviously been on the world map where we've seen uh, it hosting big, big events like the World Cup, African Cup of Nations and all that. But also South Africa has been in the world eyes through this culture of violence where we've seen black on black killing each other, where we've seen police brutality on people, where we've seen xenophobia and the likes. And according to you, how do you gauge and what do you think this is the cause of? Well, you know, I, I mean, you know, violence is everywhere. Look at what is, is happening in America today. Look at the, at, 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 at the, at the bombings that happened two days ago, or right. three days ago. So violence is everywhere. People, you know, uh, they do these things um, out of things that we don't know. You know, so uh, uh, for me, I, I want to think South Africa is a very stable country. It's a very stable economy. You know, um, we are growing very well. You know, we know uh, with inflation and things like that, that um, everybody is, is feeling the pinch. But I must say that I will encourage everybody or anyone to come and invest in South Africa because this is a stable economy, it's a stable country, it's just those pockets where there's little violence out there. I don't think there's a crisis in South Africa, not a chance. Okay, and I guess it's we're about to wind off now. Uh, South Africa has also been on uh, the news, standing up to the uh, expression, the Rainbow Nation, where two young black South African boys had a traditional wedding, which was very well attended, and the video was all over the, uh, the internet. How do you feel? Because the rest of Africa is still in denial. The rest of Africa is still closed, but South Africa is really in Africa. How, do you, how does that make you feel, and what's your take? On this. You know, on the 12th of December mm -hmm. uh, last year, I was actually in New York with uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Ban Ki Moon at the at the UN, uh, with Ricky Martin as well, to talk about human rights. Mm -hmm. For me, people should 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 be left alone. You know, uh, people should choose who they want to be, and who are we to dictate to people who to love? And I want to say. You know, uh, homophobia is not, it's not well. It should not be encouraged because, you know, really, why should somebody be killed because they love the same sex? So for me, I do not encourage it, but I just want to say I will respect people for who they are and what they want to be and say to them, you know, if that's what, that's what makes you happy, let it be. There's only one person to judge us, and it's God. So, you know, we in South Africa, we're really open-minded. You know, we abide by the law, there are rules and regulations, and people are at liberty to do what makes them happy, but still abide by the laws and the regulations. Okay. Thank you very much for coming on our show today. But we are obviously not going to just let you go. And I'm sure you know what I mean. Can you just give us one <laughs> little note? <laughs> 
What is my new huh? amazing? The song is goes like this. He's an amazing man given to us by God. He taught us to love, be free and forgive. His name is Nelson, Nelson Mandela. Called his people Rainbow Nation. Holy Shasha Madiba Mandela. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm sure our audience and viewers are obviously going to love that. Uh, just stay on the line. We need to say our proper goodbyes. And thank you for coming to Sahara TV. Thank that you for was Miss Shaka Shaka, obviously via Skype in South Africa. So stay tuned.